Hi all, Russ Douglas 222 here with a rather cool video for you. Once again, this is 100% independent. It'll be my findings and opinions and Bruce's, uh, Phoenix on the UK Night Vision Forum, his findings and opinions. Hick Micro, or as the Chinese would say, Hike Micro, have very kindly offered us the Hick Micro Thunder TQ50C thermal spotter come scope, come add-on to review. They approached me and all I've asked is, may I be entirely honest, list pros and cons of anything we find. They're up for that, which is brilliant. And uh, thanks very much for the t-shirt and the branded baseball cap. I will be wearing the t-shirt, but not in the video in case I have to hold the spotter against myself because black t-shirt, black spotter. And thanks for the cap, but there's no way that fits on my big head. Thank you anyway. So Stuart Grant, the sales manager from Elite Optical, who sent me this gear that arrived from Hick, had a good chat yesterday and he explained some of the background. I've already got a playlist, if you look on my channel, of thermal kit reviews, spotters and scopes. So not a complete stranger to uh, thermal gear. But Hick as a brand is a little bit new to me. Although I have seen, for example, at one of Bruce's recent thermal night vision evenings out up north near Ithenbank field spots. I saw Mike from Ithenbank, the Hick spotter. Uh, I think it was one of the 19 mil objective spotters and a very nice piece of kit. Spotting a, a fox coming in from the distance and observing foxes and badgers and rabbits and such like. Awesome kit. I now know a bit more. Hick Micro, who you see here, are a sister company of Hick Vision. And Hick Vision, it's a big company. This is not some small company that's going to be here today, gone tomorrow. Hick Vision have a turnover of about $10 billion annually, and they sell 400,000 CCTV cameras a day. Great thing is, Hick Micro themselves already have 150 staff based in the UK. Any Hick product, in the unlikely event that you have a problem with it, you return it to Elite Optical, who are the trade and distribution outlet. Or if you're a walk-in customer, you return it to Optics Warehouse. Either way, they then forward the device to Hick, who will do whatever repairs or tweaks are needed, right down to a full rebuild. Goes back to the distributor or the retailer, back to you, maximum 10 days. So there's a lot of backup. A company that with that kind of background and that kind of backup, they're not going to disappear and the kit's going to be very reliable, which is awesome. Right, on to the unboxing. I'll show you a, a photo here of the, the box that arrived and three boxes within it, which were all packaged individually. And then the main deal is this. This box contains the, the Hick Micro Thunder TQ50C. C, because this device has three different ways you can use it. If it was a TQ50, it would be a dedicated rifle scope only. For a couple of hundred quid more, and I'll put the uh, prices in the description below, for a couple hundred quid more, you get what I would describe as a world-class spotter and a world-class rifle scope and a world-class front objective add-on for a day scope. Sounds good to me. Get to the unboxing. So, once you open the main box with a magnetic flap lid, you get this tough box with D-rings and a zip. And this is, it's Cordura, but it's fairly rigid, clearly very protective. Right, opening the flap, we have a manual and a uh, lens cloth. The manual includes QR codes for the T-Vision app. And I should say, by the way, that Hick Micro have made what is apparently a bulletproof app, but we'll, you'll soon see that once we get testing this with Bruce in the man cave and uh, get all the functionality tested. But they're not using third-party applications. I'm reliably informed there is no lag in the app. Um, so there are QR codes in the manual to download the app for Android or for iOS. And there's also a QR code in the manual to, to download the full manual, because this is a, a quick start guide, and I'll put a link to it down below in the description. Okay, so straight away, we have Kojura shoulder strap with sprung clips, clearly for the two sides of the carry case. And we have a rather nice alloy Picatinny reach back rail. 
There's clearly only going to be one position for this. That includes Picatinny bolts with recoil arrestor studs, nut with a center Phillips screw, although they're not capstan headed nuts, there's no holes to pop a, but there is a groove. So you can see that a small Allen key will fit in there to tighten things up. So Picatinny rail, uh, up with this flap, and here we have the scope. I'll pop the weight up on the screen and then straight away we've got on off a button for still images and for video, a mode button for white hot, black hot, red hot and technicolor. We've got a zoom button so it's one, two, four and eight times digital zoom. This being a thermal scope there is no optical zoom obviously but it's a very sensitive sensor. It's 640 by 512 and it's 12 micron. So this is basically one of the best sensors you're going to get in the world right now. If you're a civilian anyway, only the army will have better kit than this right now. So we have, in addition to the zoom button, we also have the shutter button. You can set this to automatic calibration and it does calibrate quite regularly, but it only takes less than a second. So it's not a long lull when it calibrates. We have a knurled knob here to open the battery compartment and it's quite a tight screw thread because I've already popped two batteries in here. You see Stuart at Elite Optical already sent four CR123 batteries. So these are three volt non-rechargeable and as with many images that use this sort of battery, there's a function in the menu to select 3 volt non rechargeable or 3.7 volt rechargeables. So you select that. As the, the whole device is very new, this is very stiff to fasten down because the springs are, have never been compressed before. There we go, tightly sealed, and there's a, a rubber o ring around the battery compartment. We've got two brass alloy inserts female threaded and a nice wide base for the picatinny mounts it's a synthetic body i can feel that the diopter ring here and the main objective focusing ring are cold so that suggests alloy there is lots of alloy components here the body is synthetic but i'm very sure that this will be pretty much bomb proof durability wise one thing that's missing i don't see anywhere to attach a lanyard because if this is in spotter mode, as it is right now, effectively, if you wanted to have this hanging around your neck, uh, I don't see anywhere that you can pop a lanyard on. I asked Stuart Grant at Elite Optical about this, and of course, he stated the obvious. You can always attach a quarter inch thread, as with any camera tripod thread, to the TQ50C's base. Guess what I've already, already got in my bits box? A set of four wrist and neck lanyards with quarter inch threads, perfect for carrying this spotter or for wearing it around your neck. Link in description below. One very nice piece of kit. Total length is eight inches or 200 millimeters. Weight is on the screen. That's your diopter focus ring, generous rubber eye cup. And this ring here is what you unscrew to remove the eyepiece if you don't want to use it as a, a thermal spotter or a thermal scope. If you want to add some of the accessories and use it as a thermal front add-on on your day scope's objective lens, then you unscrew that ring and you screw some other accessories on. So I'll show you that right now. Here in the case, we have another flap. And then we have the adapter that you, you fit in place of the eyepiece. We have the clamp that fits the objective lens. And I asked for the set to fit 50 mil objective lens scopes out up to 56 mil. For my Discovery HD 34, three to 18 by 50, first focal plane scope, which I'll be using. And with Bruce's Citron S-TAC, 2.5 to 17.5 by 56 scope. We also have in here the accessory packs so these this one is for the picatinny rail so we have two screws washers and an allen key and that pack has got a tiny allen key and a washer and this pack has just a washer so these are for the three accessory packs 
for all the various accessories. You also have packers. These rubber packers, I think there are about six of them by the looks of it. These are to pack the Dayscope objective lens clamp ring. And you can see that this is a clamps adjustable. And yep, that's a very nicely made piece of kit. There are some precise threads on this and uh, evidence adjustment. So I'll pop that back in there for now. And here you have the adapter for use on a day scope. So we've got a unique three way keyway, bayonet fixing a red dot to line things up. And on the other end, again, you've got a unique three way keyway and you've got the ring to tighten this fella onto your scope body and the ring to tighten it onto the objective lens adapter we just saw. All excellently made piece of kits by the looks of it and I'm sure everything's going to fit together precisely but we shall soon find out. I decided I didn't make a fantastic job of uh, showing the assembly of the front end scope add-on. Um, so what I'm going to do is film this again with Bruce with a rifle set up in his man cave and do it justice. Also on the imager body we have a flap here which reveals a USB-C port. USB to USB-C cable is provided. And Stuart Grant from Elite Optical informs me there will be a firmware update in the not too distant future. He says at the present, zeroing, you manually move your point of aim onto your point of impact. But once this imminent firmware update is installed via the USB cable, that'll make two big changes. It's going to introduce one shot zero function. And also from that point onwards, you'll be able to install any future firmware updates via the app via your phone. And I'll just put on the screen the app so you can see which app it is. So when you go to your mobile phone, you go to your app store and type T-Vision app. There are various choices. The one you're after is this one with the green symbol. I had to check with Stuart because there are no ratings and I don't usually install apps that don't have great ratings but I've already installed it and he assures me that this app works flawlessly. Great stuff. Thanks for watching and thanks very much Ben and Jewel and the team at Hick Micro for offering us the chance to review this awesome kit. Thanks to Stuart, Rob and the team at Elite Optical as well and for everyone at Optics Warehouse. I'm literally away to go and uh, drop this at Bruce's so he can start assessing it as well. In fact, before I go to Bruce's, I think I'm just going to pop down to the harbour, see if I can record a few minutes of footage. Might pop this at the end of the video, because I want to try and keep this as a concise unboxing. I may have failed already. Lots more coming soon. We'll be reviewing this fitted to air rifles, rim fires, and Bruce with his centerfire foxing rifle. There may well be some pest control footage coming as well at some point. In clearly marked separate videos. We will be using this as a handheld standalone thermal spotter, as a thermal front add on on day scopes, and as a standalone thermal rifle scope. And we'll use it by day and by night in as many different weather conditions as we can. Thanks for watching. Okay, I learned the hard way that the uh, TQ50C sadly doesn't record audio with the video clips, but this is just a few still images uh, on the fly just before I uh, took the scope round to Bruce for him to start his evaluation of the scope and his review. So I'm stepping through the palettes using the mode button on the left of the control panel. So it's white hot, black hot, fusion, which is multicolored and red highlights which i really don't like really don't like the red highlights or oh, i'm not a, a fan of the uh, fusion either
I've recorded some video clips here, uh, just at my down at my local harbour, and uh, just to give you an idea of the quality of the Hick Micro Thunder TQ50C, and the people we're looking at here, anywhere from 20 to 50 to uh, a couple of hundred meters, and as you can see, the temperature graduation is outstanding. This is not one of those thermal devices that you sometimes see on Instagram or YouTube where every living sort of thing, every person or, or dog or fox looks like they've been cut out of a white silhouette and there's no differentiation or graduation. You can see that guy's cheeks are cooler than the rest of his face. This is really, really top quality image. You can really see the uh, benefit of the 640 by 512 um, pixel array and it's 12 um, micron pixels. And uh, my apologies, by the way, for any shakiness in the video here, but uh, this is just a quick rough and ready video captured. Uh, so I'm sort of uh, holding the scope in spotter mode without the Picatinny rail, holding it against my face and uh, trying to keep it as steady as possible. And um, if anyone was to ask me, I would just explain it's a thermal scope, so it's not a video, so it's there's no there's no no way anyone could identify them as another person from this. Uh, it's all uh, all very uh, on the QT. I'm just very very impressed by the quality of the image, and I'm raring to um, meet up with Bruce in a day or two, and uh, start to video his findings, and we'll have more videos coming to you very very soon including footage with the T uh, TQ-50C rifle mounted and um, and in spotter mode in the paddocks and the fields. One thing you might notice here that's new, added to the list, I just borrowed a Diana Morza K98 replica bolt action PCP air rifle from Blackpool Air Rifles. So thanks very much, Lloyd and Sean there. So I'm and I'm I've got the replacement magazine. My Baba Jaeger I bought had a faulty mag. Got the magazine, so that'll be coming soon too. Thanks for watching. See you soon.